but I wondered if you just had any thoughts. Are there any interventions for a fusion patient, sort of quite early post-surgery, that they can undertake to reduce the risk of an adjacent segment deterioration or disease? The mechanism of adjacent segment pain pathways is too much concentrated motion and the subsequent stress. So you remove that through appropriate movement training. So you're re-educating their motor patterns to be conserving of that adjacent segment. So to give you an example, if I was to get out of a chair and I'm post-surgical for a, let's say a posterior disc bulge, and every time they got out of the chair, their first move was their knees are together and they have uh, very deep hip sockets anatomically, their first move was to go into a pattern that the assessment showed caused their pain and their stress. But if you, if you could identify their hips as part of the mechanism and found that if they spread their knees apart, got their feet back underneath them, sucked a little bit of air, and then move forward through the hips, and then just a simple rock and pull the hips through. Now you've re-educated or given them a strategy that avoids the original mechanism. You de-stressed the adjacent segment. The chance of them getting adjacent segment syndrome now, a few years later, is gone. Some people will argue, well, that's a very robotic way to move. And I'll say, well, yes, it is in the beginning. Because when you coach athletes and you're teaching them a new move, doesn't matter whether it's a move in cricket or a move in jujitsu or martial arts or throwing a javelin or whatever the case may be, you repeat the pattern over and over again until you create a muscle memory of that pattern. But the second part of the process is to move into what we call movement flows. So after a while, the new default pattern is you don't think about it. There you go. And, you know, we've had enough examples of athletes who use a lot of spine motion. I think of a jujitsu athlete. Yep. Um, and, and very, very top level ones that we've uh, worked with as well. And I watch and really enjoy seeing them compete, executing the movement flows. You know, uh, they might be doing a, a neck drag, they drop step back and then pull all hips, hips, hips. Uh, and if you, if you look at jujitsu, when the force is high in the spine, they stiffen and brace it. But if they have to move their spine, they unbrace it and the load is low. This is all beautiful technique that is spine sparing to them and has a terrific athletic outcome. But it's a movement flow developed from the robotic movement patterns needed to establish them in the first place.